Hello, everyone. I'm James Milan, and welcome to this one-on-one -on -one conversation with candidate for our select board, Leonard Diggins. Um, just to mention at the outset, Len is a colleague of ours at ACMI. Len, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. I really like these kind of conversations. So uh, as much as I enjoyed the debate, I enjoy these kind of conversations more. <laughs> and you clearly did enjoy the debate. You, you, it was almost palpable how jazzed you were by it. I want to get actually right to the nub uh, of, of uh, a question that, that we that, that I have, that we have. And that is, um, you, your campaign is all about connection. And right. clearly your commitment to establishing, maintaining, um, and gr growing connections all through the community is something that's been motivating you and your actions for years and years, m long before this run for the select board. But here's my question. Um, is being a select board member the best way for you to get done what it is that you're most interested in doing for the community? In other words, establishing those connections, et cetera. What is yeah, it well, about getting onto the select board that will enable you to, to follow that vision? Yeah, well, I mean, that's, that's a good point, you know, because I certainly thought about that you know, in, in the making the decision because I am enjoying, you know, working on the various committees that I'm on. I mean, the, tra the Transportation Advisory uh, Committee, as more, even more so the Sustainable Transportation Planning Advisory Committee. Uh, I mean, I talked about aspects of this with um, Doug Heim Legal, and, and I mean, I can participate in them. It's really a matter of time. I mean, uh, I mean as with a lot of things, you have to be careful about not um, influencing things too much because of your position. And so, so sometimes it might require that I um, not talk as much, I mean, just to allow people I mean, to get across their ideas and not be overwhelmed by my, simply by nature of the position. But I think I have the, the personality that will put people Rest, make people rest assured. It's like I may be Len Diggins, select board member, but I am first amongst equals. And so the, the, the emphasis will be that we are equals, and, and in a lot of respects, you're going to know things that I don't know, and I'm counting on that in order to be able to make uh, decisions. I mean, so, um, yeah, I mean, I'll be able to continue doing uh, a lot of the things that I'm doing with respect to making the connections. Well, you know, what I'm really hoping is, especially with respect to the, um, excuse me, the precinct meetings. I mean, right now I help to organize those, but I, don't, I pretty much only go to the one uh, that precinct three participates in. And a lot of me is curious about what's going on in the others, but I kind of feel that it's a little a little intrusive to go to those, you know, but as a member of select board, I think it, it would be entirely appropriate be for me to go to as many of those as possible and then be promote them even more. I mean, so that gives me a little more of um, the ability to help try to connect the town, especially with respect to residents and the town meeting members. And finally, and this is one thing that gets back to the debate and some questions that I've had since then, and even before this, like, what is it that really distinguishes me from the other candidates? And and I, I really do have to emphasize the, the regional connections that I have. And that really came to, um, I mean, that's just been bursting forth in terms of my consciousness, especially over the last couple of weeks where I was in a Boston MPO meeting yesterday being on the Metropolitan Planning Organization, and, and uh, I chaired the um, Regional Transportation Advisory Council meeting the day before that. And it's just, even before COVID-19, it was just so apparent how we need to work on regional solutions, being to all of the major issues that we face. And, and I have really good connections with people across the region, not only for transportation, but in other issues, for, in, 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 for respect to other issues. And, and one entity that provides those connections is the Metropolitan Area Planning Council. And I have tremendous respect for them. There are actually a fair number of Arlington residents that I know um, and that are even supporters me that, that are a part of that. And, and having the ability to reach out to them for honest um, answers or, or thoughts about or about the various concerns is, is just really valuable. I mean, I'll say one more thing, Aid, and that is Aid, the town really appreciates that because, um, top, no, I'm sorry, Adam Chapdelein uh, is right now, I, if he's not the vice chair, you know, uh, he is a prominent member of the Metro Mayor's Council and they've worked a lot 
mean, not only on other issues before COVID-19, but they've really worked together I mean, for working uh, to help deal with the issues caused by COVID-19. So he appreciates that, Ian, and, and, and I look forward, given the chance, I mean, to working with Adam even more on that. So how do you see the connections that you are have already forged, the work around regionalization and regional issues that you already do, um, and your commitment to all this. How do you see all of that actually translating into opportunities for Arlington? For you know, how is that going to, be, you know, if you are on the select board, how is that going to push us as a community forward in these areas? Well, I think it will just help to push us more forward because Arlington is already known as a leader uh, in, in that respect. And so I intend to keep us in the forefront. And, and when I do see opportunities, I mean, to take advantage of those and, 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 and move us forward. I mean, it's not like I see right now some things I mean, that, that I really want to, us to get involved in. And I want to pinpoint that right now. I mean, if I did, I would say so. I mean, but, but it's not like I see them. But as you know, I mean, what what you look for is what you tend to find, you know, and, and I will be looking for those speed and 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 along with Adam mean, and other people in the planning department, uh, uh, we'll keep our eyes out open and when there are opportunities, we'll take them like one that came along uh, was the bus rapid transit pilot and uh, they hopped on that and and. and piloted it and, and, and decided that it was a good thing. And I think most of the people who participated in the pilot, meaning that the riders who I mean, took the buses then thought it was a good thing. We certainly saw good results from that I mean, at the MBTA from the, the reduced trip time because what that did was it allowed the buses to stay on schedule. Because even though a reduction in five minutes may not seem like a lot, the fact that it kept the buses on schedule meant that they could adhere to their headways, which is essentially the time between trips. And that makes the system work better. So I mean, Arlington does things like that. I mean, I can I mean, keep an eye out I mean, for um, other projects that the MPO is considering, like complete street projects I mean, that can supplement what, what we're doing. I mean, while still at the same time, I mean, having the regional perspective, because I mean, we, we, it can't be all about Arlington. It has to really be about Arlington I mean, working with the rest of the region to make the region more vibrant, because the more vibrant the entire region is, Arlington will be better, but we focus on, on Arlington as part of a wider community. And from what you understand of the work of, uh, of a select board member, um, yeah. and certainly you'd be familiar with it from the hours and hours and hours you have spent at select board hearings, I know, yes. both uh, filming them and just as a citizen who's interested. From what you understand of the work of a select board member, what what are the what is what's going to be challenging for you about that work what's going to be what's going to be a tough thing uh for you to have to take on or is are you ready just just step right in no no issues well the tough thing i mean is going to be uh the, the meetings start late it, i'm an early morning person I mean, i tend to have busy days and there are days when it, i don't get enough sleep for whatever reason uh i mean i'm, I'm hoping that it, as with the, the running the being in the control room i get so it, amped me from it that i don't fall asleep you know? <laughs> but, 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 but that's gonna be hard because i mean what a lot of times I me mean, even if i'm really interested in something if someone says something and I know what they're gonna say next to me that I'm really tired, I will close my eyes and, and it's like, oh. <laughs> so, so, so I mean, I know it sounds pretty pedestrian, but, but that's my, my, my big concern. I mean, uh, uh, but other than that, I mean, it's like, I mean, one of the reasons see, that I wanna do this, is like you bring up an issue and, and initially I may not think that it's particularly interesting, but as you start, you start diving into it, it's like, yeah, I mean, there are, 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 are important elements in here. And then you kind of see how it integrates with the rest of, of the community or some other issue, uh, make the connections um, between that, because it's not only connections between people, but it's actually connections between concepts, meaning issues that help you see the, the solution that can be not only take care of that issue, but maybe some other issues. Mean, and, and so uh, to a certain extent, people may think that it's um, a disadvantage to be a jack of all trades, and early on that may be the case, uh, but, but later on as you develop more experience in all these other um, areas, and then you are able to make connections between issues and, and come up with more robust solutions. So 
that's um hopefully um the concern. And um, but other than that, not any. Okay. Um, and one thing that came a question that some folks had coming out of the debate because uh, I think uh, a number of us were impressed uh, with your idea about establishing a, a kind of youth. Uh, uh, and young adult, youth the, and young adult advisory council right. committee. Youth yeah. council, right, exactly. To to take on, you know, not not just to be a a, a talking group, but p potentially to have real, you know, some yeah. kind of real Im yeah. impact um, yes. on policy, etc. So yeah. clearly, your focus on the next generation and figuring out how to nurture and and make and ensure their own growth and yeah. and engagement big yes. thing that everybody yep. I think appreciates. But it begs the question in some ways, what are the other constituencies in town who you also have a particular affinity, concern about, et cetera, that you're gonna be wanting to use time on the select board to be able to kind of uh, serve those constituencies? Well, well, certainly we, uh, the, 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 the elderly population, which I'm, I'm kind of rapidly approaching being a member of, uh, and I'm happy to do that because the alternative certainly isn't appealing <laughs> at all. Uh, and, and, and so, it, it, I mean, as your income goes down because you're not working it, and you want to stay in Arlington, it, um, it's increasingly hard to do so. It, uh, it, it, there just aren't many places for people to downsize uh, into hey, there are people with means me who don't want to stay in their large house but have no place to go even though they can afford it me so 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 in serving in in having in respecting and trying to work with those concerns me it also overlaps with the whole issue with housing in general and that is that we need more diverse housing me that can allow for elderly people to transition into it but also provide a place for younger people i know i'm coming back to the youth me but they're important uh provide a place for for them to live and 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 it also be that would also provide places for people with various income levels to live because we, I think through economic diversity we, we get we, a lot of the diversity that, that we want. Because as I've said to many people, I mean, this region is 84% white, I mean, so there's only so much racial diversity we can get, I mean, but the incomes are much more mixed, I mean, and, and I think I mean, to the extent we can provide for different ranges of incomes I mean, um, and different kind of family sizes because I, I love I love kids. You know, I don't have any kids, but I love kids, and I want us to be a family-friendly community. I mean, so, so, um, so yeah, the, um, the youth and the elderly. Um, and I'm going to just answer your question there instead of trying to, you know, mm -hmm. appeal to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That, that again, that's fine. Just, just, yeah. uh, I think again, be, uh, everybody would have understood that you weren't solely concerned with the youth by any means, but because you had brought that up, it was. It was, I think, uh, you know, people curious about, okay, well, what sure. else does he have in mind? Um, yeah. A clear uh, and long uh, interest of yours is uh, around transportation. Um, yes. And so I'm wondering whether you have any specific uh, programs that you want to push along uh, from a select board perspective or any, you know, anything in the transportation area that you really see as the next thing that you'd like to tackle. Well, I mean, the, the big thing that I really want to tackle with transportation is is making the transportation a network more into a transit network and, uh, because I mean, cars are an underutilized resource. I mean, they sit unused I mean, for I mean, over 90% of the time. I, mean, I think that model is not sustainable. And uh, so we certainly want to see vehicles moving, you know, bec becoming more electric I mean, and becoming more shared uh, and, and, and do it in a way that I mean, allows people to have the lifestyles that they want. I mean, we have the ability to be flexible. I mean, and so I don't want anyone to feel that, well, you know, I have a family. I, mean, I need access to a car whenever I want. We can make exceptions I mean, uh, uh, in any policy that we want while still transitioning towards a uh, transportation policy that trades transportation as transit and is available to people as they need and makes it affordable uh, so that people can okay. really thrive. And, uh, so so uh, that's my long range objective. And a lot of people have that objective. Go ahead. I, I apologize for doing this, but we've got to. We've got to stop this right now. We are have exceeded our limit. It went okay. fast. We thought it would. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it.
Um, Come back for more. <laughs> I'm James Milan. I've been talking to Len Diggins, who is candidate for our select board. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.